Hey folks, it's your instructor Jennifer Atkins Gordeva, and I want to talk to you a little bit about um, taking notes and investigating your piece of literature a little bit more. Now, as you know, in this assignment, you are required to read a short fiction text. I've given you five choices, and um, I'm asking you to take some notes. So in the summary and response packet, you're going to keep track of your sources. You're going to record what the name of your of your fiction was, or you could go ahead and uh, like just pop in your bibliographic citation. On the first page, I have a template for you. So you place your author's last name, comma, first name, quotation, the title of the short story you've chosen, and then you do reprinted in UAPTC composition mix, etc. And you place your page range of entry. If you get it from another source, you're going to have a completely and totally different bibliographic citation. But you should still be choosing one of those five pieces of literature. Um, I'm asking you to investigate a little bit. So I'm asking you to uh, write a summary of the plot. I'm asking you to identify any themes in the story. And I, I give you uh, some sources along the way, some embedded links to help you out with that. So you're expected to follow along with this as kind of a guide. Now, um, here's another, you know, link to Purdue Owl, and I'm asking you to read that little link in your text and identify any literary elements you find whenever you're investigating your, your literature piece. I've provided links to um, Chris Baldick's Concise Oxford Dictionary of Literary Terms, which is found in the databases, and I included those links through there. Now, um, between that and the Purdue OWL source, you should be able to get enough of a general idea about what you need to do. Then I'm asking you to dive in and go ahead and try out a quote sandwich. Now, this is not perfection here. You're not trying to do it absolutely wonderfully. Instead, you're just trying to take notes, kind of get an idea, get a plan going before you write your rough draft. And so you've seen the quote sandwich stuff before, and I'm getting you interested in writing one here. So when you do that quote sandwich, then you can write it as an integrated um, um, paragraph. Now, um, when you go on to the next source, I'm asking you to research about the historical, social, political, and or religious context. And I'm asking you to uh, take notes just like you did for projects one and two. I'm asking you to summarize, quote, and paraphrase. You don't have to fill out everything. You just need to try to get um, some notes written down. And uh, if some parts of it work for you, great. If some parts of it don't, ignore them. But try to do your best to um, get as much as possible written down. Now, um, here's another link to helping you with the quote sandwich idea and another opportunity to write out a quote sandwich there. And then your third source, I'm asking you to research about the author, short story, or critic from the library databases and use those library databases. The three library databases that I'm encouraging you to use are not listed here, but they are listed in your assignment sheet. They include um, the Gale Literature Resource Center, um, Literature Online, and JSTOR. So I know that that's kind of a quick tour through that, but right now I'm going to shift and I'm going to show you how I did it for one sample piece. And you'll have access to that sample piece in your module. So um, because it is too hard for me to tell you a whole literature story, we're going to um, talk a little bit about literature analysis of a very, very short piece. You're doing a fiction text, and my example is going to be instead using a poem because it's quick for you to, to take in. So forgive me for that, um, that not direct um, correlation there. I'm going to close this off, and here is the, uh, the poem that I've selected for this. I have another video that um, breaks this down into parts, and I encourage you to watch that video. But this is Breakfast by Wilfred Wilson Gibson. We ate our breakfast lying on our backs because the shells were screeching overhead. I bet a rasher to a loaf of bread that whole United would beat Halifax when Jimmy Stainthorpe played full back instead of Billy Bradford. 
Ginger raised his head and cursed and took the bet and dropped back dead. We ate our breakfast lying on our backs because the shells were screeching overhead. This is a super duper duper powerful, powerful, powerful um, poem. A lot of stuff is happening in here. Um, I have to read it multiple times to kind of get it. And if you want to pause the video here and check it out, you can. Um, so uh, there's a story about what happens. Um, uh, soldiers are lying on a battlefield. Um, the poem was written in 1914 during World War I. This really, really matters for the context. Um, they're literally in a trench. We ate our breakfast lying on our backs because the shells were screeching overhead. We understand those shells are um, wartime munitions. I bet a rasher to a loaf of bread. The rasher is a portion of bacon. Um, like, I'll give you my bacon. You'll, you know, I'll give you my bacon if um, you accept this bet. But Hal United would beat Halifax when Jimmy Stainthorpe played fullback instead of Billy Bradford. So in the middle of this um, uh, war field, they're having a sports conversation. Ginger is a character in the poem. He raises his head, he curses, he takes the bet, but his raising of his head exposes him to the munitions. And we can assume that um, his head got caught, he dropped back dead. Then the poet takes us back to the beginning lines. We ate our breakfast lying on our backs because the shells were screeching overhead. The more I read it, the more I see inside of it. So what do I do whenever I get to my, um, um, my summary and response packet? Well, I'm glad you asked. On the first page of my, um, of my response packet, I want to talk about that short fiction. So, I didn't use a short fiction test, uh, text for the purpose of the example. I'm using that poem, as you know. Um, so uh, kind of making that little note there for us so we don't get too confused. Um, I want to talk a little bit about when the story was originally published. It's not a short story. It was published in October of 1914. Um, what is the general historic period? This matters. Um, all of your short fiction texts were taking pick, um, were occurring during that time period in which you were not present and so you're going to have to find out some historical context just like I did. So the poem talks about poem, uh, moment in trench warfare, warfare on a battlefield and the world war setting is crucial. Um, so here is where we start to really look at um, some of the identifying elements and as I mentioned just a few minutes ago you're going to have to use those sources to kind of dig in. So you're not required to include something for everything. I didn't even do that. Instead, you want to find, learn a little bit more about literary analysis. You want to click these links and see if you can find examples in your text that illustrate these ideas. So I will talk about point of view, I'll talk about symbolism, I'll talk about author's tone, I'll talk about word choice. These are four different things that I could talk about um, that contribute to the overall theme of this poem, and that's what I would write about. You're going to be doing something like that with your literature. You're going to be looking at, these are just the beginning of things that you could be looking at for literature. So let's talk about the characters. I can identify the characters. I didn't have any dialogue in mind, but almost certainly any fiction text you have would. You might have imagery. Um, read that short paragraph to find out what is meant by that. I'm going to click over there uh, right, directly, and uh, you get sorry uh, the. The Pulaski Technical College ProQuest shows you the explanation of imagery from the Concise Oxford Dictionary of Literary, Literary Terms. And whenever you click those links, this is what you're going to get, a very, very, very short piece explaining what that piece of literature is. Now, this is just teaching you about imagery. This is not something that you would use as a direct quote. Um, but if you are not logged into the portal, then it would give you an prompt to log in. Reminder, whenever you log into your 
um, any sort of library database, you are required to use your username. Your username does not is not your entire email address. Your username is the part before the at sign. So we're going to go back to our example. And I'm sorry about that. We're going to shift that back. Okay. So I don't really have anything relating to imagery, but I do need to talk about the setting, the times of place. I need to talk about the first person um, point of view. It's completely and totally in we. I need to be able to talk about that. I'm going to talk about the um, sound and the style and other things. So I take some notes here, kind of use those as ways of, is this in there? Is this in there? Is this, is this in there? Now, um, later in the packet, it says, integrate what they say with what you say. So I'm going to say that the poet juxtaposes mundane events like eating breakfast with emotional impact. When Gibson pairs, breakfast with bullets flying overhead were drawn into the story and were connected emotionally. This is my idea. This is not what some source told me. So um, that my top bun is this. Now I want to um, uh, add a signal phrase and attributive tag. Now, because of the previous sentence, I mentioned Gibson. I, they already, your, you as a reader would already understand I'm talking about the poem. So then I'm going to give the protein portion, which is like a quote or a summary. When Ginger raised his head and cursed and took the bet, Ginger apparently forgets the war long enough to react to a sports bet. And then because it's a piece of poetry, I do lines. Um, as a short fiction, you're going to do pages. It's just going to have the page number, not the actual um, word page. And then I have a bottom bun, which is um, getting back to my argument. And usually this would have to be something of my own thinking. If it is something else, then I have to indicate um, that somebody else is saying that. And then I apply it on my own and I get this paragraph. The, the poet juxtaposes men, mundane with an emotional impact. Oh, that was my top bun. When Gibson pairs bolt, breakfast with bullets flying overhead, we're drawn into the story and we're connected emotionally. My top bun. When Ginger raised his head and cursed, etc. Now I have my, um, my protein here and I have my bottom bun here. This corresponds directly so that we can um, build our writing that way. Now, that's just for the short fiction piece. There's a little bit more and I, I skipped over it. When you get into the next one, here's an example of how I would do that. Now, I did some research. I had to do some research to learn more about this because I didn't live during that time. I was not, and, and I'm not a soldier in World War I. I don't know everything. And so I needed to research something about the historical, social, political, and or religious context. And so will you. So um, I read an article by Dominic Hibbard um, he writes for the War Poets Association, warpoets.org. Um, it's not a fantastic source. It's not from the, um, the library databases, but it is credible on its own. And I don't know why I didn't do that here. I guess my sample disappeared. I'll get it back in a little bit. Um, I'm analyzing it a little bit. I took some notes, general notes, about what the source was saying. Um, I built those together. Now you'll be able to see those notes in that, in that other um, video. I build a top bun here. The first person perspective of the poem is shocking. Gibson was not a soldier himself, although many have assumed that. According to, now here's my signal phrase and attributive tag, according to Dominic Hibbert of the War, War Poets Association. Here's my, um, my, uh, my paraphrase. Gibson was among a group of poets who were awakened by a social conscience and who sought to use simple language about simple topics. And then I have to have my direct citation, which would be the author's last name. I have to have that in my parenthetical citation, Hibbard. And now I bring it back. My bottom bun brings the source, brings the story back to my own um, perspective. And when we put it all together, this is how it looks. So this is not the complete and total uh, summary and response packet. This is just a sample. And I am putting this into the um, module so that you can use this as like a little bit of a guide for you and where you start working with yours. I hope this helps you think about 
um, what you might look up also. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.